Welcome to the 23rd MATLAB Arduino tutorial. This video will cover data logging from an Arduino connected to a Raspberry Pi to a Node.js server. For this tutorial, the server will be on a local computer. Here we can see the result. The LED turns on when the client and server connect, and the server prints the temperature data it receives. We will go over the hardware, the technologies running on the Raspberry Pi, including finding the Raspberry Pi's IP address, installing Node.js, installing the serial port and socket.io libraries, and the Node.js socket.io client script. We will then go over the server script, the Arduino script, and a demo. In this video, the Arduino is connected to the Raspberry Pi over USB. The Raspberry Pi runs a Node.js script that acts as a client, connecting via socket.io to a server. The server can be on your computer on the same network as the Raspberry Pi, or on a server over the internet. Temperature data will be requested by the script running on the Raspberry Pi, and when it has gotten the data from the Arduino, it will send it to the server over socket.io. The Raspberry Pi is a popular ARM-based Linux computer. It is inexpensive and relatively powerful for the price. We will be using the Raspbian Linux distro available on Raspberry Pi's website. Node.js is a platform built on top of Google Chrome's JavaScript runtime, V8. It can be used to create fast network applications using an event-driven non-blocking I.O. model. Socket.io provides a simple, easy-to-use, bi-directional, real-time communication. Traditionally, connections are transient. The client opens a connection with a request, and after the server responds, the connection is closed. Here, we want the server to be able to perform actions that change the state of the client at any time without having to wait for the client to send a request initiating a connection. Socket.io provides a simple, robust way of using persistent socket connections. We will also be using the Texas Instruments TMP-102, which is a low-power, two-wire, serial output, digital temperature sensor that operates over a wide thermal range. As shown by the graph, the TMP-102 is specified for operation over a temperature range of negative 40 to 125 degrees Celsius. The sensor is accurate to within half a degree, up to 85 degrees Celsius, with a resolution of 0.0625 degrees Celsius. The TMP-102 will be connected to the Arduino with this pinout, and the LED will be connected with the long end of the LED connected to the resistor, connected to pin 3, and the other end connected to ground. We will be using Raspbian, a Debian-based Linux distro for the Raspberry Pi, SSH, a program for securely logging into a remote computer from another computer, Node.js, a platform for creating network applications, and Socket.io, a library for event-driven networking. It allows for simple, real-time, bi-directional communication between the server and the client. Since we are going to be programming the Raspberry Pi remotely from another computer, we need to find its IP address. To do this, you have to make sure that the Raspberry Pi and the computer you are using are connected to the same network. Then, connect a monitor, keyboard, and mouse to the Raspberry Pi. Open up LX Terminal on the desktop. Type IFCONFIG and press Enter. If you are connected to a wired network, the IP address will be here to the right of ETH0. If you are connected to a wireless network, the IP address will be to the right of WLAN0. Now let's go back to your computer. If you use a Mac or Linux, open up Terminal. If you're on Windows, we recommend using PuTTY to SSH. Type in SSH Pi at sign the IP address that you got from the Raspberry Pi. Here, Pi is the username of the user you are logging into. Enter the password. By default on Raspbian, the password is Raspberry. The first time you SSH into the Raspberry Pi, you will get this message asking if you want to trust the device you are connecting to. Type yes and press enter. First, we have to install node.js. To do this, we are going to download the node.js ARM binaries from this link using wget. And use the tar command with these arguments to extract the compressed file. 
Now we have to tell Bash, the shell, to look in that folder to find Node and NPM, the package manager. To do this, use your preferred text editor to edit Bash profile in your home folder. Add two entries, Node.js home, which equals the folder extracted earlier, and then append Node.js home to the end of the path variable. This will tell Bash to look in that folder when searching for binaries to execute. For this to work, exit out of the SSH session and SSH back into it. By typing in node-v, we can see that node is installed and bash knows where to look for it. Create a directory to hold the script with mkdir and then cd into that folder. Use npm to install the socket.io client library. This takes a little while and has been sped up in this video. And now use npm to install the serial port library. Using ls, we can see that a node modules folder has been created and inside of that folder contains the socket.io and serial port libraries. In this tutorial, we are going to be using Vim for text editing. Vim is a text editor based on V that works in the terminal. Here are some great resources for learning how Vim works. The client script takes care of communication between the Raspberry Pi and the Arduino. Additionally, the client script communicates with the server running on a computer as well. Set up the socket.io connection between the computer server and the Raspberry Pi client using io.connect. Set up the serial communication for communication between the Raspberry Pi client and the Arduino using serial port. Open the serial connection using sp.open. Register event listeners on the socket.io connection and the serial connection. If the socket.io connection is lost, turn off the LED and close the serial connection. When the serial port on the Raspberry Pi receives data from the Arduino, if the data is equal to A, perform the handshake with sp.write and set up the timer to request periodic temperature data. Otherwise, send the data received from the Arduino to the computer server using socket.emit. When the socket.io connection receives an LED event from the computer server, if the data that it sent is equal to true, turn on the LED on the Arduino with sp.write. Otherwise, turn the LED off on the Arduino with sp.write0. Use your preferred text editor to create a file app.js. In this file, import the serial port library using require and then get the serial port object from that library. Import the socket.io library. Connect to the socket.io server. Change the IP address to the IP address of the computer it will be running on. Set up the serial port into variable sp. Specify the address of the Arduino, the baud rate, and tell the library to use a line parser. Open the serial port connection. If the socket.io server is disconnected, then turn off the LED. And close the serial connection. When data is sent by the Arduino, if the data is the character A, then the Arduino is starting the handshake process, in which case we will run the handshake function we will define later. Otherwise, the Arduino is sending data. Send the data to the send data function. When the socket.io server sends the LED event, data is either true or false. If it is true, turn on the LED. If it is false, turn off the LED. Define the function handshake. Inside this function, respond with A to the Arduino, completing the handshake. Tell the node.js server the Arduino is set up, and use the function setInterval to run the function requestTemp every 500 milliseconds. Define the function requestTemp. Inside, write a capital T to the Arduino. Define the function sendData. Inside, send the data to the node.js server using omit. On your computer, install node.js from their website. Then, use npm to install the socket.io server library. In the node.js server script, we're going to set up the HTTP and socket.io listeners on port 8080. Then we're going to register an event that is called when a client connects. When a client connects, we're going to register the init event on that socket. When this event is called, we're going to tell the client to turn on the LED using socket.emit.
And we're also going to register an event temp on the socket. When this event is called, we're going to log temperature data received to the console. Use your preferred text editor to create app.js. Inside, create an HTTP server. Import the socket.io library and tell it to listen on the HTTP server. Tell the server to listen on port 8080. When socket.io gets a connection and the client sent the init event, respond by turning on the LED. When the client sends the temp event, log the data it sent. Let's look at how to interface this with the Arduino. Add the library for I2C communication. Set the pin mode for the LED. Start the serial connection and do the character handshake. In the loop, if there are characters available to be read from the PC, read them, then switch. If T was received, get the temperature and print it over the serial connection. Get the temperature using getTempSent, a function we will define later. If a 1 was received, turn on the LED. If a 0 was received, turn off the LED. Define the function getTempSent. First, request two bytes from the sensor, a note on the 7-bit address. 4. TMP-102 devices may share one I2C bus and read operations are addressed 72 to 75, based on the ADD0 pin configuration. Since we have grounded it to logic 0, we use decimal 72, which is found by converting the hex number to binary, then bit shifting right once. Read two bytes from the temperature register. As the TMP-102 stores conversions as 12-bit value, Position temperatures are denoted by the most significant bit equal to zero. Bit shift the first byte four bits to the left to form the MSB. Bit shift the second byte four bits to the right to form the LSB. Then logic or the two to combine. Multiply by the resolution of the sensor to get the temperature in degrees Celsius. In the case of negative temperatures denoted by the MSB equal to one, Complement the absolute value binary number and add 1. To run this, run the server script on your computer, the client script on the Raspberry Pi, and the sketch on the Arduino. When the client connects to the server, it turns the LED on on the Arduino and starts receiving temperature sensor data from the Arduino. The client sends the temperature data to the server, and then the server displays this data on the console. On the left is the terminal for my computer, and on the right is the SSH connection to the Raspberry Pi. Start node.js on the server, and then node.js on the Raspberry Pi. If you stop the node.js server by pressing Ctrl C, the LED should turn off. Thank you for watching. Please visit matlabarduino.org for more videos.